Hello fellow gamers, welcome back to Fire on the Sacred Stones, Kevin J2010 here. In the last episode, <clears throat> what were we doing? Clearing my throat and we just started the episode. Um, yeah, we were working on routing some enemies. This level doesn't have that many enemies, they're just all powerful enemies. I mean, like, there's four heroes right there. Like, that's some sort of power they got behind them. And in this episode, we are going to work on powering our way through the rest of the level. Hopefully we can finish it in this episode. Let's let the enemies take their turn. Aw, oh, jeez, he's spawning more enemies. Aw, oh, bruh. Aw, oh, poo. Let's thunder that. How far would this guy be able to move? He's moving one, two spaces, and even if he got the third one there, it wouldn't really be that big of a deal. Uh, should we start attacking him? I can start picking on him from here, actually. I'm considering it. Although, you can definitely fight them off, I think. I don't know, maybe that was a bad idea what I just did there. Okay, so he spawned some druids there. I don't want to use Mir too much because I do like using her and she is very strong, obviously, but... <clears throat> Sometimes just need all this training. Oh, what? you don't have to get critical hits all the time, Mir. I mean, like, you're already strong enough as it is, but I mean, come on. Ah, people complain that this game is too easy. Mir ain't helping the problem. It's why I prefer the the original Fire Emblem. Not that I don't like this game. This game has better gameplay and class up stuff. Just that the story mode in this game is much, much easier compared to the original North American release. Yay. Oh. Didn't need it, but that's awesome. Or do you know... What's with my team and like just... Just, you know, let's, let's get critical hits when we really, really don't need them. We'll exhaust all our chances of getting critical hits then. Because then when it does matter, we'll, we won't get them. Like, uh, Let's go... Because they're all going to use lances. Let's get him to use some of his axe powers. Kabam! Uh, yeah, I took no damage because I'm a general. I don't think we've seen Gilliam's critical hit as a general yet, now have we? <clears throat> I don't know, I've got, I got that phlegm thing in my throat again. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 boo, boo, boo. The tomahawk is so powerful. I love using it. Anyway, so yeah, it, it's. I feel like it's been a while since I've recorded this, and to be totally honest, I was actually excited to get back to recording this one because of sort of where we are right now in the game. We're getting sort of close to the end. Well, we're not that close to the end, but the story is starting to get a little bit more intense, and I like that. So yeah, stab. Okay, now over here, I can probably do some simple math. If you have a power, a magic of eight, and you're going to use L fire, which has a base of ten, you're doing 18 damage. Subtract his resistance of 14. So he should take four damage. If I'm mathing that correctly. Now, what's your resistance? Your resistance is 5, so you would take about 9 damage from it. I'm thinking... Yeah, you know what? You just start working on them. Because they're going to come running up and start hurting us soon anyway. Let's just start weakening them. Okay, well, you can miss. That's fine. I hit my microphone there. Sorry. Um, You're going to go in there and just sit there with your iron hand axe. Yes, your iron hand axe. What do we got set up here? There is a weird thing you can do if I can get this to work right. There we go. That way when the hand axe breaks, I will have a second item. Um, is anyone able to attack? Oh, well, he would. So let's not go to that armory just yet. As much as I, you know, love using Erica. We'll move them up just in case he needs backup. And we'll move you one space down. So that way, if at most, you'll get attacked by one mage. And hopefully you can draw in some fire. And the only person left to move is Ephraim, and I'm not going to do it. So let's go. Thank you. 
Okay, so it's back to our turn, and uh, almost let Arter almost died, and that's that is not cool, man. That is not cool. But the big thing that happened during that um, enemy turn, if you noticed, Sally got a new item. Sally got the uh, Fim Fimbulviter. It's been in uh, every single Fire Emblem game. Don't know what it's supposed to mean or what it says. Let's just leave it at it's really powerful. That's all I can really say is that it, it's it's one of the most powerful uh, anima magic spells in the game. Not the most powerful. There is more powerful. It's just more powerful than like Elfire stuff like that. Um, yeah. So kill you. You need a little bit of healing from taking the hit of the Fimbulviter. Oh, I think I just put him in range of that Swordmaster, didn't I? Oh, just barely out of his range. Perfect. Because that's what we'll that's what we'll be working on next is working on getting that. I'm gonna kill Araxu because I feel like it. Um, working on moving towards um killing him next because then that leads us right to Lion. Um, one thing I want to quickly ask you guys: if I was to ever do another LP sort of along these lines. You know, this sort of style of game where it's turn-based top-down. I do have a lot of fun playing them. If I was to do another one, it doesn't have to be Fire Emblem technically, but there's only like two series that really fit that sort of criteria. Which game would you want it to be? Um, pretty much the only games. I I'm willing to do the 3D Fire Emblem games, just not Radiant Dawn because I still haven't beaten it yet, so I won't go rushing for that one. But... I do want to do uh, one of the 3D ones eventually, probably Path of Radiance, even though I don't even have that game. It's just fun. Um, what can, what's worth buying here? Well, we have a lot to buy from, but I really want to buy that killer bow, so I'm going to buy it because no one has one. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So yeah, there's also the Advanced Wars games, if you think that'd be fun to watch. I'm trying to play uh, Days of Ruin again, but I haven't gotten around to it. What do you guys think is the best Advanced Wars game? Because Days of Ruin is fun and all, but I don't know. The more I play it, the more I'm like, yeah, this is fun, but I mean, what's so special about it? I don't know. I can't make up my mind about it. Oh, wow. I was I was going to, like, stop talking because I'm like, oh, I've been kind of going this whole time. But anyway. Okay, you're going to charge in. Uh, you only have killer items, though. Oh, wait. Can Sally potentially... Oh, Sally can. Perfect. Can we take you out with the Fim... Fimboviter? No, we can't. Dang. I was hoping we could somehow. Dang. Is there any way we could take out that guy? <clears throat> you know what? Not this turn. Maybe next turn. Because I'm going to move Seth all the way over to here. But yeah, what, what do you guys think would be a good... If I was to do a Fire Emblem LP... I mean, not another Fire Emblem LP. If I was to do another Fire Emblem slash Advanced Wars LP, which one would you want it to be? Because... I do love those games a lot, so feel free to leave a comment telling me which which one of those would be cool. Um, I haven't played the original Advanced Wars nor Black Hole Rising in a good little while, so if I did do it, I have to practice it and everything. But those really were some of my favorite games on the uh, on the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance was such a revolutionary system, like. And it's, it's the more I get, the more I look at it, it's it, it wasn't anything like super powerful. It just was fun. There was a lot of good games on the Game Boy Advance. We're not really in the golden age of gaming anymore now, are we? Th like we were in a good time with gaming, the GameCube, PS2, Xbox era. The Game Boy Advance came out. Those were all revolutionary consoles because I think at that point, gaming had got to the point where we play games to have fun and all the games back there were really fun there was no hope there was like no little hokey oh cool we got we got motion sensing stuff although there was the eye toy with the ps2 which was actually really fun i remember playing that a lot at my friend's house but you know it's things like that 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 is what, that's when gaming was fun like it still is fun now like as i've said i love twilight princess and stuff but the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube, they had such amazing games on it. The more I look back on it, I'm like, there were so many games on the GameCube I remember playing over the Wii 
There's a lot of games on N64 I remember playing. Every system I have games where I remember, but I, I don't know why. I just love my GameCube. This GameCube's gone through so much. It's fallen off my uh, my shelf multiple times, which is already funny. Because Another thing you can comment about if you don't know about the Fire Emblem one. Um, comment on, like... Do you ever do you do you guys have like the console that never died even though it like fell on the ground? It went through like the worst stuff. Like it, it, it did not have a good day. Or like a good life. But it still, you know, lived through it. I'm gonna talk through this enemy turn because I feel like it It's not gonna take too long anyway. But you just, you ever just had that, that one console? Or it could be any of your consoles, like they've, they've fallen off the, the counter or wherever you leave them, off the shelf, landed flat on the floor, game discs, the tray opens up, you lose the faceplate on it, but it still works. It still works. Back when games were durable, that's, that's, oh man. My Wii's fallen off a few times too. Like that was pretty cool. How many times my Wii's actually fallen off the, uh, <coughs> my old uh, table downstairs. Well, the old place I had left it, so. Stop spawning enemies. I want to kill him. Let's see. If I were to attack him right now, he would do 29 damage to me and probably kill me. If I use the hand axe, similar outcome. Just stand in there in case you do get attacked. Um, okay, you're going to take out this guy. Because he totally messed with you the wrong way. Don't care. Oh, sweet. I was like, let's not use the killing edge. Whether I get the critical hit or not, I didn't really care. I think even after Nosferatu, we would still have enough health to sort of live. So you're going to go charge all the way up here. Aw, oh, dang it. That doesn't work out in the end, now, does it? Do I want you to tank the hit and then just... Oh, you'll kill him. Oh, you know what? Screw it. You'll kill him anyway. I sort of want to get Ardor over to Lion, because that would really help us if we can get Ardor over here. But we'll see. It's going to take a little while. Because Ardor does have all the light magic, which is powerful against dark magic. As you know, that's why we saw the whole story about everything and everything. These enemy turns can't be taking that much longer anyway, so... Just... Oh, you're going to take forever to get through the mountains. Ugh. Ross can get through it like it's nothing. Jesus. Oh, you're definitely not even going to get through there. Oh, dang it. That was a stupid idea. Note to self, kids, do not bring a general through the mountains. They're not gonna they're not gonna get through it. I don't know why I'm singing the music. Oh, uh, stop! Uh, oh my god, they spawned so much. And we can attack this guy. Well, we can, but we have to attack him from, like, here. Anyway. But yeah, I think I'm going to end it once I kill all these druids and kill just the a, a couple of threats that are sort of standing right in front of us, i.e. the ones that are standing immediately in front of us. Well, we have Seth here, which is good. We don't have our power guys here just yet. They will get here eventually. Worst case scenario, Mir will be able to attack next turn. Hopefully. How far can you move? Five spaces? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, can't make it. I don't think you can stand on that space either. And will Erica be able to do good against these guys? I'm not sure. Well, he's holding a Brave Axe. Oh, but the Siegeland does so much damage anyway. They made her OP now. Let me. Do you get the Brave Axe for killing this guy? Because if you do. Oh, we do. We, we better kill that guy. Oh my god, you have no idea how powerful that really is. Siegeman would kill him as well, but we would take loads of damage just in the fight. What are you holding? A oh, silver sword. Okay, yeah, we can fight that. Um, you can use divine on that to kill it. And I guess that'll be the end of this episode. Stay I was about to say stab, but then I was like, steer. Don't know why. Okay, so you will be able to get through it just very slowly run through the water because you're cool like that. And you know what, friends, you stay there. Anyway, so next time on Fire Emblem, the Sacred Stones, we will be um, hopefully killing Lion. I was planning on doing it this episode, but ran out of time. It happens. I'm sorry. But we'll do it next time. We'll beat him. I promise. See you guys later.